Um, we have a pediatric dental specialty office um, and a board certified pediatric dentist. Um, our practice sees only children and uh, special needs adults. So you get 45, 50 kids a day, you said? Yeah. What age range? Um, you know, any, anywhere from a few days old, <laughs> in the rare case, uh, all the way up to um, typically we tra transition kids over to a general practice around um, the late teens, maybe 18 or so, uh, dependent on their needs. Um, we do have, like I mentioned, some special needs population that's, that's much older. I'm fascinated by that. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about it. Well, what what kind of, give me some classification. Yeah, so I mean, the, the reality is most of the time we don't feel that there's a lot of training consistent with our special needs population and having dentists being able to treat um, adults that have significant challenges. Uh, therefore, a pediatric dentist, uh, being that our training has taught us about a lot of this stuff, we are most apt to be able to, to cover it. Um, you know, in, in specifics to Healthy Start, we're actually seeing quite a few uh, kids that are really not great orthodontic um, candidates in the, you know, in the traditional form of, of, you know, considering braces and things like that. And so therefore we're able to get them to start wearing these appliances either at sleep or in their occupational therapy sessions and achieve orthodontic results and straighter teeth and better breathing and all that other kind of stuff that comes along with it. So um, the the adults that have special needs, are we talking like autism, Down syndrome, mm -hmm. that type autism, of thing? Autism, Down syndrome, um, sometimes not even a really diagnosed condition, um, but you know they're in they're in a specific home. They have some significant um, limitations as far as cognitive and, and behavioral you know um, issues. Um, some some phobias. You know the reality is we are also going to have the ability to take uh, children to the to the operating room. Uh, for treatment or adults uh, for that matter um, sedation and things like that we we, are, we do a decent amount of that as well well the reason that I'm uh, really caught my ear is because we're wanting to work with children who have autism who have mm -hmm. these things and since you're working with adults mm -hmm. you're exposed to this mm -hmm. um, does that give you a better um, equipped approach for children when they come in that oh, have yeah, that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, we're seeing um, probably my fifth case that I started with Healthy Start was on an autistic patient, um, one that had significant issues with sleep. Um, he was up eight to ten times a night, um, couldn't sleep through the night at all. Um, we put this thing in and within two weeks he was sleeping through the night uh, for the first time ever and he's like 11. Um, we also have a, a child with Down syndrome who I had just prior to this taken him to the operating room, bilateral crossbite, meaning super narrow upper arch, could not breathe through his nose at all, which is, which is typical of, of a presentation of Down syndrome patient. Um, but we've since, since we started this and we got our impressions and we started our records, um, he's wearing his appliances, he's got, we did an expander for him in conjunction with this as well, um, just totally different. I mean, totally different presentation of his of his arches. So it's great. How resistant was he, or compliant with um, it, I think it really, you know, so much of it. Compliance depends so much on the entire family dynamic, mm -hmm. um, and and I think that one thing that we really, really took from our very first session. Um, here is that you have to <laughs> take that into account. You have to build the relationship from the very start. You have to bring the family in for the appropriate consultation, make sure everybody's on board and let them know that this only works if you wear it. <laughs> so if you're not if you're not consistent with having the family support him in that and they don't have the internal drive to do it, it's not going to work for any patient, period. Um, you know, you, you have to be able to wear it. And and the nice thing for this particular patient that we're speaking of is he has at school, he has um, his teachers have focused, you know, one on one or one on two or three time to where he wears his appliance and just keeps it in that whole time. Um, and he puts it in every single night before bed after brushing. Now, does it always stay in? Maybe not, you know. But um, you know what we found is that they're they're finding that it takes longer now for it to fall out. Um, you know, even though we're we're several months down the road, sometimes that happens. And um, but I, I mean, I'm I'm seeing the changes like amazing differences so um, you know we, we feel like if you if you front load that initial attention and really set expectations as, as what they are um, you know that people can make their own decision on whether or not they think it's going to work if they if they don't feel like it's going to work I, I'll be the first to tell them you know maybe this is not a good choice for you to spend your money on